Hey man, first dive of 2021. How are you feeling? Is 2020 over or not? Hard to tell. <laughs> 2020 seems, seems like a year that's going to last for a while, for some some time. Yeah. But but I did feel I did feel something changing in in the new year, New Year's Eve, uh, the, the last day of the last year. I, I felt some some energy. I I couldn't explain it because I'm living in the country and I'm really isolated from people. And it was me and my companion, and uh, we're not we weren't sharing much with other people on that day specifically. But I, I was feeling something, you know. So maybe. The tide is turning. Yeah. What do you think if we explore a little bit about the role of culture in our company and what does culture mean? And and we actually work uh, on our so our actual work around culture, but sharing with people. So you watching uh, Pedro is our head of culture at season. So uh, we're going to use the opportunity to, to work on, on that. It's amazing. I, I have a couple of questions for you and I wanted to ask them because I have this feeling that a uh, part of my role is really uh, defined. Like uh, mm -hmm. when we think about uh, supporting people like as individuals, being there to help them to think about what they're doing, how they can improve and to, to have a safe space to uh, bring personal stuff or work stuff, just to process it and be able to get into it uh, with a, a better focus. But uh, I'm getting this feeling that there are other parts of it that um, I feel it's lacking. And Lacking a clear definition, you mean? Yeah, yeah. To me, it's, it's a new role. Even though I've been uh, in this, in this, playing this part for a while now, there are things that I'm still learning about culture, about business, about the enterprise, and everything. And I'm not afraid to say that because it's it's thrilling to to be learning still. I hope I yeah. I, I keep learning yeah. for a <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and I and I I could bet uh, you're probably the only head of culture of a software development shop around so it is new for us as a whole we're mm. this is this is um, probably not there are so many dev shops but probably you're not the only one but you're, this is definitely a rare role when it comes to small companies as a whole it's very rare to have a very small company with a head of culture thinking someone that's dedicated to to thinking and, and growing our, our, our culture and facilitating the growth of our culture so it's definitely something new for myself as well where we are we are creating this and the first thing we did once we had you here is that we stated culture is important for us we, it's so important for us that we have a budget for it. We have a great person heading it and we have um, processes around it, around it and we're creating those. But the, the first statement is, this is important. This is important enough for us to, to have a department eventually around it. But even though we're starting with one person now, I wanted to start with a with a question that is a to 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 see this part of us uh, in a zoom out with a zoom out uh, the macro vision. We've been talking about our values and we've been defining and uh, ex doing it as an exercise. Uh, what are our core values? And thinking about our future. But uh, I wanted to ask you, what is cute? What culture means to you beyond the values, as as a daily basis, as a daily function, as something that applies to what people do every day? Culture is the hidden manual, something like that. It's it's not only the the hidden manual. That's that's a limited definition. It's the hidden manual, and the hidden um, personality of the group. So. That's, that's what I would, when I think about culture is all we cannot see 
that is there as a group. So, for example, for example, valuing code reviews even before we had anything that that says, hey, it's important to do code reviews that we right now we do, but in the beginning we didn't. It was part of the culture, and the challenge is to document these hidden things while at the same time fostering new hidden things to to happen so so we will later have to update our documentation because mm -hmm. culture is is a living thing we're we're learning one one example another example of culture that that is very important is how important is design in our processes the inception of our company said uh, in an unspoken way that we didn't need designers to 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 do great products because that's what there was a hidden assumption of mine to to at least to create great mvps and then we learned as a group and I, myself as a leader was probably the last one to learn and that's that's why culture is so important people were learning uh, at the the front right that oh we cannot achieve this level of quality without a designer we cannot achieve that result without a designer and people became speaking about it what should we do around design and people became uh, started to to teach me what i didn't know i knew around design and that's why i didn't think we needed design designers because i was aiming for a, a kind of developer that that also knew a bit about design so it started changing much before we changed the company structure much much before we hired our, our first developer in larusso who's our head of design our first designer sorry in my vision of culture is those things that start happening and that, that are hidden that we need to be able to explore in a good sense like learn from from the hidden stuff yeah in my way of thinking assumption is a is a key word for com culture like mm -hmm. maybe we could yes. define culture as the collective of, of our assumptions that are that are um, that are uh, that are being applied to our behavior like and i would define assumption as those things that make it easier for us for us to behave in a certain ways and harder for us to behave in another ways yeah. so it creates like a framework of uh, regular behavior yeah like incentives for some kind of behavior disincentives for a, another kind of behavior yeah that are created by assumptions Yeah, and and that are uh, placed between us, like in a space in, in the field, like in our yeah. uh, a relationship yeah. field. Not, uh, not there are not there. You could name rules that try to express them, express it all, but uh, a rule is not is not something that sometimes a rule is going to to, to affect uh, behavior. Sometimes it, it, it won't. Yeah, it's, it's much subtle subtle than, than that. From what you were saying. I got the feeling that we could we could split an idea uh, of the culture that we project that we want to have, like uh, code reviews are code reviewing is it's an important thing, and what is already happening. Yes, definitely. Like the difference between the map and the territory, right? Mm -hmm. One is the map, but the map is never. Uh, never reflects the actual territory perfectly and then we are always creating a new version of the map and what's the use of a map which which in our case would be like a culture code which usually companies have this kind of the 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 value of having something like a culture code is helping new people navigate the social the unspoken uh, environment the social environment with more ease it's never gonna be a perfect representation so if you read the in the culture code it's important to do code reviews i, I don't know if that's what we're gonna write there but uh, if you read that for example someone might 
spend their whole day doing code re doing code review and not understand that it's more important to actually deliver working software for example one uh, very pragmatic example of when the map can confuse you yeah and so the best we can do is to care about hosting a good experience for people and do our best and not expect to have the perfect map instead let's say oh this is our map i hope it's helpful to you and if you need help navigating the actual territory just let me know i'll be here to support you yeah. but um, when you talk about a map uh, i get the impression that we are drawing what we are seeing and uh, doing that in a way that we can uh, relate to the territory to help us to navigate but it's not perfect but another thing is to project the the, the blueprint the, yeah blueprinting it like we go, we want to have uh, um, some plantation right here and maybe we can have a lake there and yeah. uh, do you see some work like that regarding culture like we need to change yes. some things yes and i and i uh, and i want to to use the opportunity to to improve our metaphor there is mm -hmm. the territory there is the map and there is the blueprint for the future development yes so i think it's great that we're we're, we're having a chance to to like talk in a more conceptual sense around this because this i i hadn't thought about the three aspects of culture which are one thing it's how things actually happen and how people interact and what are the actual assumptions the actual feelings Another thing is the documentation of the assumptions and how things happen. And a lot of thing is the design of the changes we want to make on the territory. And this, this can be helpful for, for our, our jobs. Like we need to, to at least write two things instead of just one culture code, right? Yes. Yeah. One thing is to try and learn what we what is working for us right now and the other thing is how how do we make that become better still and that's something that um i'm kind of struggling with how to suggest changes i think uh from from my background sometimes i'm bringing um maybe i'm i'm afraid of seeing things and anticipating too much I don't know. And uh, we do have one thing that I've learned since I started work at, at Season is about um, iteration, the importance of iteration and in, to implement a small part of something and to learn from that implementation. And I don't think that I'm, I have the, the possibility of rushing anything. It's not that. But uh, my way of thinking sometimes seems to be too far ahead. I'm, I'm yes. not sure if, I'm not sure if, if it's real. I'm just saying something for us to explore, right? So but when I, I suggest we're both vision guys mm. and and we we have to deal with, with that fact you you probably are anticipating a lot and those can be based on false assumptions yeah. just like I am right now when I think on the the more commercial side of the company I'm seeing like a hundred moves in the future from one assumption we have which is to to focus on working with DTC founders, which is uh, a topic we can, um, I think we have discussed a little bit in other dive episodes, but the, there's this assumption that because we have one successful project with a DTC founder that we think we are able to provide tremendous amount of value. We want to have more of those. And the actual next step would be Let's find the second client. But while I'm looking for the second DTC client, my vision is like in the far future where we have worked with hundreds of DTC founders, found their common issues, created a technology that helps with that and on and on and on and on and on. And I literally think that might be 10 years in the future if it happens at all so it's it's a mix between a waste of time like with things that are too far ahead and creating the drive for the next step because 
it makes me really want to take the next step when I see the potential in the future. Yeah. So uh, I, I wanted to give you this example because this might be very helpful with your current struggle, which is, okay, I don't know if I'm too far ahead or if I am not. If you know the very next step and the long-term future, it's enough. Yeah, I'll have to, to think about it to be able to continue this specific line of conversation. So I guess I'll just ask you another question. Yeah, yeah. How do you evaluate my role, the head of culture? In the sense, how, how do I evaluate your performance specifically? Yeah. The, or yes. the performance of someone in your role? Yes, exactly. Right now, right now it's 100% intuition. I trust that you care a lot about people and being a great host. Because in the end, the head of culture is a great host right? You make people feel more secure. We had, we, we had the good fortune of being friends for more than, I don't, I don't know how many years. Probably 20 something years. 25, 25 years. years yeah. 25 yeah. years. So it's easier. I, 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 I trust you. The care part and the host part i know you have in you because i've seen it many times in the past then i evaluate evaluate like is pedro in a good moment does he know how important he is does he is he secure am i being a good host to you if i feel the answer is yes he yes he's in a good moment he's feeling secure and I'm being a good host to you, I trust that you're going to care and you're going to be a good host for, for the people. And that's the fundamental part of the evaluation because then I know I have the right person for the job at the right job, the right position. And then there is the... Um, I'm, I'm doing this in real time and I, I, I haven't thought thought about this and it's it and it's great then there is the like how can i help you improve your performance and then with that th there might come specific feedback like in our last 101 i, I shared uh, last couple of 101s I, i shared a few pieces of feedback very specific and then there's like How can we how can we see your role as a leadership role even if you don't have direct subordinates but you talk to the whole literally talk to the whole company so it is a leadership role just a different kind of leadership role yeah how can we improve on that but when when i think about evaluating i i think for example when i got sick i know i know you step up and were more present in the the parts of the company i wasn't because i was away this kind of subjective evaluation me means like okay yeah we do have the right person for the job at the position no idea in the future if we we'll ever know enough about the role of a head of a head of culture to have like objectives and key results that we can measure measure it's a good um exercise right it's a yeah. very good exercise but if we are going to be as precise as we can be with a software developer for example which yeah. is it's still vague it's still subjective with a software developer but it's less yeah one thing that that got my attention especially got my attention from what you were saying is if you wanted to look to see if i'm performing well you would uh try to evaluate how secure people are feeling. Yes, yes. I, I don't know that that's true because people can be very insecure and you can still be doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the, 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 the part of the individual, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's what makes it uh, complex, your, your job and my job as your leader. But... Definitely, I think I will would be able to evaluate how much you care about people's security and how much you did to help them feel secure, even though they are not feeling secure. 
if, if that were the case. Yeah, but but to me that's great. That's a that's a, that's a great target because I think in part what I'm feeling is um, I'm secure enough. Now I'm thinking about it that there's some issues there as well, but. Uh, I'm kind of secure about my work when uh, talking with people, uh, individuals with, uh, with as one-on-ones and uh, and caring for people individually. But uh, as my work developed and I, I was getting more of a feel about it and about the company and knowing each person, I started to 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 try and uh, and think about how it would be to be acting in a transversal way, like the process that we have yeah. and and that's a little bit more delicate because culture is by definition something collective and uh, there's a lot of people that are really 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 important to the company's culture like our head of production you and uh, a lot of people everybody that, actually right everybody yes and uh, especially those that are in leadership positions, maybe, and maybe not, because the, there is the, the structural leadership and there's the occasional leadership that is yeah. as important, if not more so. Um, and those are the people that are making things that are so perceivable. They, they're like, they're bright people, like they're shining yes. and people are looking at them as references and yeah. they may be references because they are giving answers uh, because they have the structural uh, capacity to do that or because they are giving answers because they have the ability, the skill to do that. And so this this is more challenging to me because if I'm going to suggest some changes in, in that regard, I will be putting my spoon in someone's meal. Yep. yep. Yeah, like you're, you're, you feel you might be overstepping or you might be bypassing some, some, someone. The, the, this fear, I, I acknowledge that. And it's, well, uh, the first reaction is welcome because that's my <laughs> yeah. everyday because I have leaders in position that I want to influence, but I don't want to do it uh, in a direct way. I don't want to tell them what to do. I want to, at best, share my vision and um, the constraints we have around, not not even the constraints we have, the constraints I see, because I don't, don't even want to consider the constraints I see uh, as real constraints, because sometimes we can, through innovation that someone else create remove the constraints but the way i do that is and i know um, it's not fair because i'm i'm hierarchically above those people and you're on like hierarchically on the same level but i it's interesting that i think that the best thing thing i do sometimes is not to do anything yeah exactly <laughs> like my answer to that is i have to create with the people which is amazing the best thing I could could do, but then I see such amazing people working with us, and they are doing such amazing jobs that I I'm just looking at it and thinking, what can I do to improve that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes things that I see is so subtle that it's hard to to suggest something. So. Yeah, and and man, this this is at the core of leadership uh, as a whole. Um, you wanna you wanna become obsolete. You wanna um, make sure people don't need you and and you you don't have anything to contribute. While at the same time, know you know that there is value in what you do, which is nothing. <laughs> it's it's like it's <laughs> weird. Uh, objectively, yeah. nothing. So objectively, nothing. But being there. In being present there actually provides value because of what because of the grounding your experience brings to the table. That's why when you talk about the feeling of uh, feeling secure, the importance of feeling secure, you give me something to look, um, something concrete or more or less concrete to yeah. be looking forward to. Being... At least better defined, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. Then again, probably we had a conversation really similar to this a couple months ago, but it's something that is so new that I'll probably be asking some similar questions uh, like three months from now. 
Yeah, and and I and I don't think uh, I don't think this position will have the the best answers uh, soon, at least. I think this will be uh, an exploration. Maybe uh, one thing. I, I maybe I realized this too late, but I think people might have no idea what you do at the company when they're they're watching. So let's try to 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 <laughs> fix that. Can you tell us a bit about what you do objectively, uh, apart from being head of culture and and having this part where we've been discussing that m we might document the map and uh, the blueprint, etc. But on a day to day, what it is that you do? Right. So nowadays, my main focus is to help with the retrospectives that are meetings that we have in each project. Uh, in which we uh, look what was achieved in the last sprint, that's the last week, and what was good about it and what we could improve. And I'm there to help to help get deeper in, uh, and help in the communication, people to understand each other, and to help not letting people uh, let something pass, something important pass, because sometimes people get the feeling that if I go deeper in this issue, I might be uh, troubling someone. Yeah, hurting someone's feelings or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm there to help to uh, get to that point without hurting anyone. And if in the case that we have some conflict, rising up conflict is usually not something that get uh, the, the people in the the, the, the worst mood it's like something uh, some some uh, thing that people see in different ways uh, conflict is something really important to every relationship in my view so I'm not talking about great struggles but every now and then we have something uh, uh, more like that I'm there to help again people to understand each other to listen to what it's the it's important in what the other person is saying and I'm also uh, I also focus in uh, having one-on-ones with each person at the company to see how they're doing and to offer some safe space for them to bring stuff even if it's personal stuff and the content is not going to get out of there what is going to get out of there is some feeling of how the teams are doing or if someone is not in a, in a good place I just tell uh, warn other people like Let's take care of that person right now. Nothing about, uh, more than that. Um, I'm Just also... Let me inter interrupt a little bit because yeah. this is so unusual. I think we need to explain it a little bit more. What you do is like you active listen to people during this one-on-ones yeah. and you're not necessarily talking about work, right? You're talking about anything they want to share. Yes, yeah. And people, uh, nowadays I've been uh, inviting people more often than they've been asking me to be there. Mm -hmm. But if someone is going to some struggle, like uh, some family member is passing through something or anything that is, uh, it, it, it's making it harder for them to focus, to, to do their, their job well, or even if they are not going to do their job that day, but they need some safe sp space to, to vent, they can... Uh, ask me to, to talk with them and I'm there for them. Just to give an example, um, well, even though my, my example is not um, on the personal side, it's a work example. The other day, I was getting ready to, to have a very important conversation with a client and I was really nervous. And then I called you and I said, man, can we, can we talk? And, and we had a short one-on-one -on -one yep. where you just helped me understand how I, why i was feeling what i was feeling like oh i'm i'm having butterflies uh, is it and you ask me questions and and then i realize it's because i care a lot about those people i i i, I want them to be um to have a great outcome even from this difficult conversation and it was like 10 minutes in this case very very short one But then it was it, it, it was 10 minutes because I think I called you 10 minutes before the meeting yeah. <laughs> when I realized I, I was nervous. And, and I immediately joined the meeting, meeting and I was in a much better place than I would be without that phone call. And 
sometimes in other companies we have colleagues that that we call for that but we don't usually have someone whose skill is to actually active listen and and you develop this skill over the course of many years and many um endeavors and many experiences etc even if you didn't have the skills which you do that's your job so you're available for people and the the combination of those two is amazing you're you're available when people need of course you're one person with one calendar right if everybody needs you at the same time it won't work but but it's not the case usually imagine and i and i know we do but i wanted to share with people imagine the effect we will have on the on everybody's mental health performance uh level of satisfaction uh anything actually that's related to to your capacity of process what you're feeling is benefited from these conversations with you so yeah i think with the examples we we are making a little more tangible for people to who who don't have someone uh, to do that on their jobs to understand right yeah what's uh, i think that we it, it took us some time to get to this definition uh, in the, at this meeting because uh what's my my current struggle is to pass beyond a uh, one-on-one relationship to a systemic one yep. with the company which is where i see culture uh as a thing even though it's uh being practiced in each meeting in the niche encounter this is another field of 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 action that i i want to develop more skills yeah yeah and i and i know and i know that i i think just my my job is to remind you at every time we have a one on one or something that those two things like the one on ones and the retrospective meetings are so invaluable to the company that it's important that you feel it is enough before you explore more i'm not <laughs> i'm all for exploring more but um not from the feeling of undervaluing the core of your day-to-day activity and yeah i know i know it's hard when you are a fish you don't see the water you're not aware of the water you might not be aware of the value of this kind of communication because you you you've been communicating like you do for a long time and you might not even just at the beginning when i was talking about design i i thought we didn't need design because i was was so used to either working with great designers or learning from them and then copying what they do and doing it myself that i didn't wasn't able to to perceive the um, extra value i brought to the table i just thought all developers would be able to also design it un- unconsciously you might not see the full value of this kind of conversations because you've been having them for a long time right and that's that's something that's amazing when i meet you because it's like uh, reminding me of the uh, the ground i'm i'm, I'm stepping right now and yeah. and that's that's something that is inspirational even if we're talking about uh, the quality of any one on one it's like uh, reminding ourselves to connect with with what is our base like yeah. or core maybe should we end it like that seems like a good ending <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's great to explore this i know uh, and for you watching i know we this was a very different episode because we were really working on something that's out of our grasp we are trying to discover this so thank you for sharing the ride